Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We're really glad you're here. We have a great conversation with Joseph Fields. I mean, we all know him. He plays the keys during worship. He's an integral part of our worship team. Um, and he is, his gift just truly makes room for him everywhere he goes. However, there's a lot more to Joseph than just what meets the eye and what you hear on Sunday morning. And that is what we get into today in this episode. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Well, hello, Heritage family. We are here with another fantastic yeah. winning conversation. Um, this one's going to be special. This They're one all special. is special. They're all special. Yeah. However, this one is uniquely special because we are here with Mr. Joseph Fields, the piano man, the man behind the piano and behind the music and so many things, as well as our worship leader, worship pastor. Danny, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. It's good to be here. Joseph, how are you? I'm good, sir. It's great to be here. Absolutely. It is good to be here. Joseph, you are one of the amazing, like, I, I always like it when people let their gifting do the talking, you know, you, you're, I've not had many conversations with you. They're always smaller. Yeah. They're always amazing. And like, I really do appreciate you. I always go out of my, I think I go out of my way to say how much I enjoy, enjoy you on the piano. Like it's always, I think you have such a special anointing on the keys. Praise God. I, I do. That, that's absolutely right. Kind of explain to where that started with you. If you can. It started a long time ago when I was probably six months old, maybe close to one year old, where I had an interest in the piano. And uh, I would go into the one of the rooms of our house where the piano is. We had an upright piano way back in the day. And uh, I would reach up to the keys because I liked hearing the different sounds from those keys. So the white keys, the black keys, all of those. And uh, so mom and dad sat me on the piano bench and uh one day I was able to uh, pick out the notes of Jesus Loves Me just by hearing it because I could, even back then, I could understand what pitch was. I didn't know what it, what the terminology was then, but I knew what the, those sounds were. And I heard that, and I began to pick out Jesus Loves Me, this I know, note for note on the piano at a very early age. Wow. That's like, we said before, it's like a superpower. It's so <laughs> amazing that you ha- like were able to hear that. I can hear it now. <laughs> I'm and much your, older. your parents obviously recognized that they did i mean they're musical too but i'm not i mean did they start playing at six months old also <laughs> no they did not <laughs> i mean that's a gift yeah yes ma'am. so you, at one you're this is around one you said one years old yes. and you're picking it out when did you start actually like playing the piano besides you know you know the difference like picking at it yeah. versus two hands on there really kind of going through it when did that start Maybe around four or five, I want to say, when I was trying to uh, starting to understand chords. Maybe closer to two, but also at two years old, I also started uh, taking an interest in the guitar. But I wasn't playing it like normal people do. But I was like strumming it, like laying a- across the floor and just strumming it. Mm. And so I mean, you play multiple instruments, correct? Is that I do. What other instruments do you play? Or do you enjoy? I enjoy the piano most of all, but also the acoustic guitar and the bass guitar and the drums. Okay. What's your, your favorite is piano? Yes, sir. So maestro. I love that. That's, that's your nickname, maestro. Is that your nickname? That what you call it? The team calls you? Yes. I, I gave him that name about seven years ago. Yeah. And, and here's the wow. reason. Let me tell you the reason why I gave him maestro. So we, we together and um, I just start singing something and I say, hey man, what key I'm in? And, oh, you and C. And I'm humming something else. Hey, what key I'm in? Oh, that's E flat. Oh, that's D. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this is something else here. <laughs> yeah, it's called perfect pitch. Yeah. And he has that. And so, and wow. and just the things that he's able to to, to do and, and to let you know, I'm, I'm, I was like, this is unbelievable. Mm. And I just started calling him Maestro and then... We all just took a take uh, a liking to it, and everybody that's that's his name. I mean, if you're gonna have an awesome nickname, I mean, my that's up there. That's <laughs> up there. There's worse nicknames. <laughs> that's amazing. So you work with Pastor Danny. I think you guys have a very close relationship when it comes to the music side of yes, our. Yes, sir. And your let's just call a spade a spade. These worships have been. I mean, they we have such Off an amazing we have such an exactly. a strong worship right now in this house that I think people are really being. Like it is, people are getting to church early. You know what I'm saying? You know yeah. what kind of worship you got to get where people come early to get their seats? Um, and we have that right now. And I think a big part of that though is your ability to kind of command that piano, 
You know, is that something that you guys work on a lot? Well, yeah, pretty much. I mean, we're together every week. Um, and so our chemistry is, uh, is really good because, uh, he has to wait until I get the songs. I have to wait until I hear from God on what songs for us to do. And, um, when I present it to him, um, he pretty much then, uh, takes it to the next level, uh, musically. Mm. Um, and, um, of course that's not an easy task to do. Um, because you have multiple songs in one setting um, that you have to do. But for him, it seems to be a bit, a bit easy <laughs> because he just gets up there and um, he hits a home run every single time. And um, so it's a, it's a joy and it's an honor for me to work with him because um, I see his heart. And uh, he loves God. He loves people. Yes, sir. And... Um, he he makes a, a huge impact in what we do. And a big but, but you do composition on your own outside of the church. You and your family have, yes. are very musically inclined and involved. Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, absolutely. We um we have a family ministry or teaching and music ministry called Fields of the Harvest or Fields of Harvest now. And we uh we've done our own original songs since around 2008 or 2009 somewhere in there. And um, Mom and I have written, uh, have co-written songs together. I've written a few myself, and um, mostly Mom she gets the lyrics and the melody from different places like scripture and like inspirational type things. And then she comes to me and I she sings think she she sings it to me and then I just play it on the piano like like this is the right chord you know she'll, or she'll tell me like I'm looking for this chord or this kind of thing in there. That's how that works. That's amazing. And your mom has a beautiful voice. Like it's such an amazing yes, duo yeah. of like her harmony or I don't even know the right word to use for that. Harmony. She sounds amazing. Amazing. So that to bring that to you and you're able to just speak that language perfectly and kind of come out with some amazing music. That's awesome. And you guys put this on Facebook, YouTube. Where do you? Yeah, we have both Facebook and YouTube right now. And we're looking to uh, do more on there. And we currently do a lot of uh, Facebook live streams every Friday night at 5.30 p.m. And we're also putting that on YouTube as well with a multi-live stream type thing. We're calling it Kingdom Treasures. I mean, we all see and we all get to be blessed by this gift on your life. But I know that there's more to you and there's more to everybody than just the gifts that God's given us, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> what do you love most about serving in the church? I really enjoy um, keeping, you know, serving the house of God with excellence, you know, not just on the worship team, but anywhere I can serve. I, I always want to uh, uh, reach out a helping hand, you know, greeting at the door, you know, vacuuming the floors after the event or after any event, whatever it may be, or, but I'm just, I'm just ready to serve. And that's like, I, it's so fun to hear that. It's so so pure. You know what I mean? True, For our yeah. leaders that like this house specifically has that servant mentality and its leadership yeah. that is truly top down, you know, and it's amazing to hear that because you, let's be honest, you have a skill set that could go anywhere. I mean, your talents for this, your giftings could go anywhere, but yet you've chosen the local church. Like you've chosen this house. Like, why is that? I believe it's the calling of God to serve the local church and I can definitely see myself doing that for the rest of my life until the day that Jesus comes to take us home. Is that wow. just, just for the local community is your heart or just like, what is it about the local church specifically versus larger ministry? I definitely like the community aspect of it. And I just really love loving on the community. Awesome. That's a great love answer. That. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your gift obviously takes, uh, training and time and you, you put effort into it. Yes, absolutely. Um, what, how do you, anytime you're on the stage, you're always ready. Where does that come from? Is that, is that, I mean, if you, if you have a gift and talent, sometimes it just happens when you walk, but does it come from a different place than just, I have this ability? Definitely spending time with God in the word and listening to a lot of Bible teaching, you know, from this house and also from other places in the word of faith arena. Who, do you, who else do you like to listen to? 
I really like to listen to Keith Moore. He has a face school broadcast that I really like to to watch from his website. It's really cool. That's awesome. Going back to that, just being in the word, being in being like kind of filling yourself up before you come in and pour it out to this this house yeah. is amazing. How do you what is your preferred method? Is it more of like just reading? Is it listening you said before? Or what are the priorities for you when it comes to spending time with God? Well, first thing I do when I get up as I is I go I you know, I read the chapter a day that we're doing and then I'll have breakfast of course and then I'll I'll go and listen to either the Believer's Voice of Victory or Brother Keith Moore. I just love practicals. I'm one of those people, like, it's, when you hear people, like, on a high level, it's fantastic, but, like, how yeah. do you walk your day out? Like, how do you serve the Lord day by day by day? And it's great hearing how you just dedicate that time. Do you do you always go in a time with God with instruments, or is there times when it's it's just you in your closet, or what does that look like? Because from the from from our perspective here, we see the anointing and we see the gift and we are blessed by it, but we know it doesn't come just from you know eating Cheetos on the couch. Like right. there's there's any ministry you do comes from your time spent with the Lord. So will you shed some light on what that's like for you? Yeah, most of the time when I'm you know praying to the Lord and talking with each other, I just I'm just usually by myself, not always with an instrument, but sometimes I have done that. When you are working on composition, when you're working on building music, is it more a focus of you have an idea that the Lord's put in your heart or is there just like, I just want to see what comes. Is it more free flowing? How does that process work? It works both ways, actually. <clears throat> like I said, you know, mom comes to me with ideas and a lot of times I just like to f uh, flow on the keys and get ideas that way as well. How do you, how, where does that, not just the gift come from, but where does that passion come from? I guess it could be just the, uh, the love for music. Um, the love for music to a point where you know that someone is counting on you to provide it. And um, in order for you to provide it, you have to practice. You have to make sure you're always ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to love what you do. And if you love it, then it makes it more easier to uh, to release. Simple passion for it. Yeah, a passion yeah. for yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Is that something your parents... I mean, obviously, where you were in a musical household, but was, it, was there a love for a church? Was there a love for... The kingdom, what was it in your home growing up that helped develop who you are today? It was definitely all of that, especially the love of music, the love of God, and just the love of just the love of people. Mm -hmm. it was just, like, I love like I learned I I used to play an instrument, the saxophone. But then I look at Katie and I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't play the saxophone. I didn't play the saxophone. <laughs> didn't even come close to playing the saxophone. That's playing the saxophone, mm -hmm. you know? Like I learned how to play chopsticks. Then I watch you and I'm like, I didn't learn how to play the piano. <laughs> like, I, like I wasn't even the same arena. It wasn't even the same instrument, you know? And that's what's so amazing about it is, is that passion comes from that. Like I've learned music. I love music. I am one of those people that think music moves my soul and spirit immediately, which is why I'm very specific about what I listen to because it has such yeah, an impact. Exactly. And that's kind of, I think why I gravitate to your, your, your playing. Cause I think it has a sub significant impact on this house and what we're doing with. And I just, are you under, are you aware of that? Like, yeah. Like, are you understanding that what you're, what you're doing up there has such an impact on all of us who are out here? Right. Exactly. You know, I know I've noticed for so many years that the Holy Spirit can flow from the music, from, from what I'm playing. You know, I, you know, I, I want to see, you know, lives change and, bodies healed be because of the anointed music that comes from my hands. Or what is the difference between music and worship? Is there a difference for you or is it one in the same for me, for somebody who's not musically inclined, I make a joyful noise unto the Lord, but it's right. joyful <laughs> it may not be, it may not be in pitch. He appreciates it. He appreciates yeah. it. Our neighbors. Yeah, as long as it's from the heart, that's what yeah, matters. Yeah, it's from the heart. 
So, but worship for me doesn't always encompass music Mm-mm. because it's not, it's just not part of my makeup, but it is part of you. Is there a difference between worship and music for you? Well, music is definitely a tool for worship and I've enjoyed doing it for so many years. It's just become one and the same for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because wow. I, I go back to our original conversation we had with Danny, like the first podcast where you were talking about how the process of you, that time with the Lord and how that manifests on the stage, like mm-hmm. that, that the part that we don't see, you know, we don't see the time you spend with God. We don't see the amount of, of effort. We just see the finished product. And so, like, I can't thank Danny enough for the time he spends with the Lord to make sure what we're getting mm-hmm. is anointed and the presence is being welcomed in. And you guys just did, you went yep. in studio recorded some 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 of your work here. Yes, sir. Recently. Yes. It's, Dude. Tell us about that. The Year of the Maximum. Yes. Um, and that song was uh, inspired by our founding pastor, Dr. Jerry Savelle. Um, and he gave that word, uh, to us. Um, and at the top of the year in January, um, I just started humming, um, this is the year of the maximum, the highest level attainable. I just got that part and I, I was stuck on that part for like maybe a month or two, but every time I would just sit down, I would just keep singing it, singing it, singing it. And, um, I was home and then the word started coming, you know, um, and when I got the song, um, I was very excited, and um, I called Maestro, and um, I told him, hey, we got to get together. I got a song, and I started humming the music and singing some of the words, and of course, he just sat down at the keyboard and just started playing, and I mean, the song just came to life, and um, we had a great time recording it. I mean, it was amazing. The team was there. Um, and everybody who came, I mean, we just had so much fun because that was our first time, um, being in the studio together as the team. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is the first song that we're putting out together. So, um, it's great. Bro, if I could tell you how many times I'm throughout my day going, (laughs) 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 you know, and I can't sing, but I'm always like, I'm always doing the falsettos. I'm going high. I'm like, oh, do you see it? You know what I mean? Like I'm always... I joke all the time. I'm like, that song is in my head more than any other song yeah. that has been in recent history. I'm, and it's always that part. I'm always, da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very catchy song. It, it, um, it's like literally hilarious. And I'm, I'm just so grateful to God because, um, and that goes back to just being in tune with what was coming from the house. Mm-hmm. And um, so what we're, what we're doing is not to bring attention to ourselves, but to always make sure that we are connected with the house, whatever is being spoken, whatever is being said. So if Dr. Savelle or uh, Pastor Justin releases a word, um, it is my job, um, if there's a song, to make sure that it coincides with what's being spoken. Mm. That's awesome. And you played on that. So when we hear the single, it's you playing. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's him. He Well, that's-, that's him on, you're going to hear piano, you're going to hear organ sounds, that's him. You're going to hear synth. That's him as well. <laughs> so, Basically, he was the only one there. Uh, <laughs> more or less, it's a studio of one. Uh, it's a one-man band. Yeah. So we can talk a lot about piano and, we, and our musical instruments, but is what else is there to Joseph? Like, what is it you do, like hobbies, personal things that you do that aren't music-related necessarily? Yeah, outside of music, I really enjoy uh, doing YouTube things. Um, I have a hobby for trains and different things i just say trains yeah trains like model trains or i have two model trains but i also like you know the trains in real life like, the, like you like a full-on like engineering trains yeah okay wow. yeah those are those are really cool to me that's one of those things that's been that i've that that has interested me since i was a little kid okay you know, seeing trains go by in the city i'm like that's so cool i could even in the even in that i could it's just wow do you just like learn all about them, like their engines, their components? I have in the in the in the last few recent years, I've been studying on those. That's awesome. You said YouTube things. What do you mean YouTube things? Well, I like to you know live stream and do uh, connect with different people. There's a lot of the people that are connected to my channel are, are from outside of the U.S., which is really cool. 
like the Philippines and there's uh, other places like Taiwan and Hong Kong, just many different places. That's incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. So, Do you see yourself ever moving into the position of like a teacher of this, kind of like sharing your like your passion, your skill sets with others, like in terms of like teaching people how to play a piano or like kind of teaching people how to compose music or in that kind of lane. I do. I do see myself doing that with, you know, teaching, you know, this is how I play this. And I've done videos of that in the past, but I definitely want to do more of that. Okay. Um, thinking about being on part of the worship team. Right. And you're here and you're in rehearsals every week and you guys are on the stage. I'm sure there's dynamics involved that we don't see. What is it like to ebb and flow with the team? What are those dynamics like in the worship rehearsal? Well, sometimes there are kinks to work out, but a lot of times it's it's pretty easy with Jose and Katie and Caesar and, and Tommy. They're just wonderful musicians, and they love God very, very much. So it's I can see their passion as well for the, for the music that we do for Heritage. And Kedron as well, our, yeah, our, our, our young drummer. Dude, he's really he's young cat. He's yeah, super talented. Man. He's amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. So, I mean, and like I said in the beginning, it's just um, all coming back to chemistry. Um, everybody willing to back up and just hear from each other so that we could put the best foot forward um, musically. Mm -hmm. um, takes a lot of time. Takes takes a lot of work. But mm -hmm. when you have people that really care about each other, See, because it goes beyond, you know, us on the stage. Off the stage, we really respect one another. We really care for one another, and we love one another. So when we right. do get together, it makes it much, much more easier uh, for us to work out the kinks and the all the other stuff. So you are right, Tanya, when you said that, because um, sometimes there's melodies um, that, let's say, Maestro, Maestro could be playing on the keys, but we could hear something else or Tommy could hear something on an electric guitar that will fit in with what he's already doing. Spontaneous. So, yeah, and so it's just all about working that out. And that's even with the vocals. You got sopranos, you got altos, you got tenors. So working on those uh, vocals to get everybody to mesh together, that's, that's what that is. So it takes a lot of work. But everybody's willing to grow and everybody's willing to learn. Yeah. And that's what's amazing about the team. Yeah. What is it like, Joseph, under under Danny's leadership? It's been an amazing journey working with Danny these last couple of years. And, man, it's just been wow. <laughs> is it fun seeing the transition from him being on the drums and kind of coming into the leadership position? Yeah. Because you you've been there through, through uh, from, my, from my understanding, all of it, correct? Yeah. Just about, yeah. And so what's that like been for you in terms of just like the, a culture shift of, of worship? It's been interesting in, in a good way. You know, it's uh, putting more of that pep into worship, man. It's just, it's just fun, a lot of fun. Do you see the, the difference style-wise from previous worship leaders till now? I have, yeah. How have you adapted to that? It's been an easy transition for me. You know, I've been playing for so long, it's easy to transition from one person to another. Okay. And and you know, hear what they hear what they want musically and to adapt to that. That's awesome. You get to see us. We don't get to see ourselves. You know, what has that has that been a significant change in terms of how the congregation is receiving the worship? Yeah, I think is we're we're all locked in. Yeah. And so it's fun for us to look out into the audience and see uh other people worshiping and praising God because we're doing the same thing, mm -hmm. you know? And so you got a whole body coming together, even somebody who might show up that's not a believer as of yet. But when they come in and they see, wow, the worship team is worshiping, they looking in the audience, wow, the audience is singing and clapping and rejoicing. Mm -hmm. um, it's It shows the unity um, and the family that we have. And so... That's one of the first things that people see when they when they come in. You know, they look to the stage, they see us rejoicing and stuff, but the audience is doing the same thing. Yeah, and that makes it even more fun mm -hmm. uh, for for what we do. Well said, then. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those like where I'm I'm an eyes closed worshiper. You know, where I don't 
I, if I look around, I get I'm, I can get distracted. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. I like to keep my eyes closed because I don't want to be distracted. Like worship is your time to yeah. to be with God. You know, however it is you're doing that. And so I, I'm like, I'm like, oh, you guys don't ever close your eyes, <laughs> or if you do, you know what I mean. Like I do sometimes. I, I, yeah, I, me too. Yeah, I've me seen too. that, and I'm like, but you can close your eyes and just keep playing. You can keep yeah. playing, but I, I always insane to me. It's, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Like, and I'm just kind of like that, that time to be in, and again, it's your time to worship as well. As much as it's our oh, time yeah. to worship, it's your guys' worship as well. You know, and that, just that focus on that. I'm always, uh, oh, again, I'm always so happy about it. Yeah. And sometimes a lot of the stuff that we do is not rehearsed, is not planned. Right. I mean, a lot of stuff that people hear is we're just making up songs mm-hmm. <laughs> right on the spot, you know, and that's one thing that's awesome about Maestro is that he's able to flow um, when that occurs. Like I can, and and the chemistry between us is I can just look at him and he knows where I'm going. Mm. And he's like, he's always right there to, uh, to take us there and everybody else just follows along and get it done. That's mm. awesome. Yeah. So just to understand from our perspective, because we don't have these gifts and they get to be on display for the kingdom of God, for God, to give him glory, um, it is a beautiful thing to witness and participate and to be in worship with people who have such a gift and there, and you guys just, you just freely give it and you give it week in and week out. And I don't think that can be understated the amount of time, even though it's a natural gift, Joseph, and it's just flowing out mm-hmm. of you and you've done it since you were, you know, a toddler. Um, there is something special about a heart who wants to give that to God. A lot Mm. of people don't. I mean, if a lot of people take their gift and run to the world with it and you haven't done that, is there, is there any, has there ever been a time when you had thought about that or felt like, man, I could, you'd probably make millions with your gift. I mean, like if you just took it to the world and ran there, has there ever been a time when you've, when that's been a temptation or has it always been about the house of God? It's always been about the house of God. You know, I could, go out there and make all the money doing secular music, but no, I'm just going to be obedient and stay, stay doing what God has called me to do. Awesome. That kind of leads us into the question we ask everybody. And we love this question because there's just a variety of answers. So there's no real wrong answer on this, but you know, making winners in life is what we do at heritage. It's the theme. It's why Dr. Seville, you know, open the church. It's, it's everything we do. It's, it's why we worship the way we do. Right. When you hear that statement, what does making winners in life mean to you? It means, uh, being an overcomer, you know, uh, any, any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God and he can, become that overcomer and triumph over any circumstances that the enemy may try to throw against us and say, no, Satan, I have authority over you in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. It's, a great, it's a great answer. <laughs> it's great. I like how we've asked, we've asked this question so many times now I know. and every time we get a different answer it's and beautiful. every one of them is amazing. It's like, it's a crazy how that statement making a winner in life in a house like this has so much meaning. There's so many different people. It's so great to hear. And it's so personal. It means something different to so many people. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Anything else we should touch on, Man, Pastor I, Danny? I, I, I want to just say, you know, the majority of the people that come in contact with Maestro, they see that he's uh, very quiet. He's very laid back. Um, and there's a lesson in that. Um, what he's showed me is that you don't have to be loud to be powerful. Mm. He's a real powerful person That's fantastic. with what he does. But his aura, he's laid back. He's quiet. And that's something for all of us to take into consideration. And um, I just love working with him. I love his, I love, I love him. I love him. I, I, I have a genuine love for Maestro. And um, I'm looking forward to what, you know, bigger and better things that God is going to do uh, with us. That's awesome. That's great. Well, Thank you again, first of all, for sharing your gift with us and for being obedient to God and being here in the house. Um, We count it a huge honor to have you, have you both on the stage leading us in worship, leading us into the presence of God. So first of all, we just want to say thank you for that. Um, A lot of people would run and take the gift because your gift, I mean, perfect pitch and the, (laughs) the anointing on your life. I mean, you could, you could run to the world and you haven't you've chosen to honor god with that and i think it's a beautiful thing 
Um, and I hope people catch that in your heart. And secondly, thanks for coming on our podcast. Yeah, you're welcome. It, I enjoyed being here today. <laughs> it's been so wonderful. We will link where you can download the Year of the Maximum single from Heritage Worship, where you hear Ooh. all of the great talents and gifts uh, on display. Um, put links to Joseph and his family's ministry, Fields of Harvest, a lot where you of can links. find them. There will be a lot, <laughs> a lot of, links. of links. It's a busy um, family. Yeah. And then I had heard that you actually released an instrumental album called My Heart Yearns For You, right? That is correct. And I'm going to link that also. What? I know. So many things. Come so on, many Joseph. things going well, on with Joseph. Christmas one last year, did you? It's called uh, Christmas with Friends and Family. We're going to link it all. We're going to. As I said, gonna it's going to be the most linked it episode is. ever of like, just like, oh, bang, bang. But we want people to be able to find you. Absolutely. Because your gift just makes room for you and brings you before great men, just like the word says. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're so blessed by this time with Joseph and Danny. Um, we pray that it was a blessing to you. And next time you go into worship um, and you hear him playing those keys, be thankful to God for the gift that he is. Um, again, next week, next Friday, we'll have another episode of Winning Conversations. 